Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special Encore presentation of Enterprise Security Weekly. The hosts and production crew are taking the week off for Thanksgiving, so we're pulling episode 267 out of the vault, breaking into cyber perspective from high school. For this episode, I interviewed Dr. Tim Cathcart, who teaches math, cybersecurity, and computer science at Bearden High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. Every semester, Tim has me come out and chat with his students, and it makes my day. He's done an amazing job building Bearden's cyber program, which has competed every year for the past six years in the Air Force Association's Cyber Patriot Competition and took third place statewide last year. Since Tim's work with his students represent the very start of the cybersecurity career pipeline for our industry, I wanted to have him on the podcast to discuss why he built this program, what he's learned from doing it, and what it means to him. I also wanted to feature this interview again for two reasons. First, it's a great interview, and I think we should all spend more time ensuring our industry has a clear and accessible career path. And Tim is sadly leaving Tennessee in this program, so he needs to find a replacement to continue it and uh, to teach his students. I'm hoping one of our listeners might be directly interested or might know someone interested in taking over a well-built and popular high school cybersecurity program. If you're interested, you can reach Tim at timothy.cathcart at knoxschools.org. And I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did when I was making it. And as always, thanks for watching. To see all the Security Weekly Vault picks, visit securityweekly.com forward slash vault. This is a Security Weekly production for security professionals by security professionals. Please visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to all the shows on our network. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where we talk security vendors and aren't afraid to name names. It's Enterprise Security Week. All right, today's topic is teaching cybersecurity in high schools. We're excited to have Dr. Tim Cathcart with us today. He's a math, computer science, and cybersecurity teacher at Bearden High School here in Knoxville, same town as me. Tim has a PhD from Virginia Tech for a master's degree, some other degrees. We get it, Tim, you like school and learning. Uh, Tim retired from the Air Force in 2017 after almost 32 years of service. Thank you for that service as both enlisted and officer. He was originally trained as a rescue navigator, has executed over 75 rescue missions and knows how to fly C-130s. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, just as an aside, in honor of uh, World Backup Day, I too am having backup challenges and am restoring uh, yeah. one of our servers here in the classroom uh, onto Proxmox or trying to do so. It's uh, It's been a challenge so far, but at least we had a backup. So that's a plus. Yeah. It's, well, at least, yeah. I mean, having having to, you know, needing a backup and uh, successfully using that backup are sometimes, sometimes a, some very wide spaces between those two things. Indeed. So, Tim, I, I forget how we originally got introduced. Uh, did, did you find me? Because uh, Tim's had me speak to his cybersecurity classes a couple of times, which is kind of what led me to uh, thinking to, to bring Tim on the show, because we're constantly talking about um, how people get into cybersecurity. Well, wow, that's a great question. Um... I don't recall. Uh, I know that uh, you've been incredibly supportive of uh, the classroom, and uh, I don't. Uh, I, I don't remember how we got connected. But oh, I know. Yeah, your uh, your son was in uh, one of my classes, and we uh, we connected via that way. And uh, so that's been that's been a couple years or so. But uh, but yeah, it's been great having you and uh, the security background and resources that you bring. And by the way, the kids love you. Uh, that you're consistently the uh, top ranked uh, speaker of all, of, of all that we have come to our classes. Yeah, it's, it's an absolute blast to get to talk to high school students, because when you talk to peers in the industry, uh, people are afraid to ask just general questions. They're, everyone's afraid that their question is going to be a dumb question and they're in front of their peers and things like that. And, and so they, they tend to be reticent. And, uh, you know, or, or not reticent, reluctant uh, to, to really dive in and ask questions in, in a lot of uh, professional environments. So it's refreshing to get in front of a bunch of high school kids. And, you know, sometimes you, you send me the questions beforehand. Sometimes they just uh, fire them up 
uh, when, when I'm there, but they're, they're always great questions. And I, I, I really appreciate uh, getting to talk to the kids. It's, uh, it's nice. Hey, uh, it's nice. hey, Adrian, Adrian or Tim, can, can you guys give me uh, off the top of your head? You may not be able to. I, I hope I don't stump the chump on this one. But Adrian, what's some of the more common questions you get? And I presume these are high school students. Um, what are some of the more common questions you get from them? They sent around how much does it pay? What does the work look like? Is it fun? Or, you know, does it get deeper into, hey, do I need to know certain languages? Do I like what's what's the level of questions you tend to get? You know, it, it's all over the map, um, but it's interesting. I, I get a lot of questions about stuff that's kind of adjacent to cybersecurity. So I get a lot of cryptocurrency questions, uh, you wow. know, which we, we we actually discuss here on, on the show quite a bit as well. And I get a lot of questions. Um, like there seems to be a lot of general frustration around uh, um, um, not trademark, but uh, – you know, takedowns on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> copyright infringements. Copyright. Copy, yeah, yeah, copyright stuff. So it's interesting that they get they get very into that. You know, they they, they seem to really empathize. You know, for creators who you know struggle to put up videos and and uh, you know get marked for takedown. You know, because they use ten seconds of a song or something like that, or, or get targeted by some large corporation. Uh, so, so it's, it's an interesting perspective they have. Um, yeah. And, and I do get a lot of those kind of general, uh, questions like they love stories. They, they love hearing anecdotes, you know, like what's the craziest blank that you've encountered in your job. I get a lot of those. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I had similar experiences. Of course, I was speaking to elementary and middle school students. So the, the vibe was a little different. They weren't, they weren't getting close to choosing a career at any point. So. Tim, you know, I'm kind of curious. Um, I actually learned a bit about you prepping for this uh, for this call. I didn't really know much about your your background. You know, I, d- I didn't know that you were in the Air Force at some point. But um, you know, just kind of curious, you know, what led you to teaching and, and maybe why high school after you left the the services? Yeah, so you know, uh, that's one of those things uh, that you think about. What are you going to be when you grow up? And like I tell the students, I, I still don't know myself, but um, you know, after retiring from the military, uh, the nice thing is I have a, a retirement coming in. And so then uh, it becomes, what do you do after that? And I'm, uh, I feel like I'm a little too young yet to uh, just retire, retire. Frankly, uh, I don't think my wife could handle me being around the house that much anyway. Um, but so it's like, what do you do? And, and so, you know, kind of looking around and thinking about it. And I didn't want anything like crazy uh, busy because I'd kind of done that kind of thing before, although I, I did uh, maybe mis mischoose by going into uh, into high school teaching. It could be a pretty hectic environment, but um, you know ultimately they needed math teachers, and so I said, well, I got I got a BS in mathematics, and so maybe I could be a math teacher. And um, frankly, you know, like elementary school, I'm just not like a little kid person. You know, like oh man, it's leaking. You know, what do I do with this? Um, but you know, middle school, high school, and high school just be- because they're like they're like 75 percent adults, right? You know, they're they just, in a lot of ways, they just lack experiences, right? You know, so that's the part mm-hmm. where they're kind of just missing that that fleshing out. So, um, but it can be a lot of fun. And, and kind of like uh, what you've heard to Adrian, as far as when you're talking to them, um, sometimes the questions they ask, well, it's like, wow, that's a, you know, the, I had one student, every single uh, guest speaker, he would ask, well, how much money do you make? And it's like, okay, when, when do you learn? That's not, you know, that's not a very polite thing to say, but, but also just the crazy things they do and, and sending them on, uh, you know, left-handed monkey wrench, uh, you know, hunts, uh, you know, stuff that uh, that's kind of fun. So it's, it's kind of engaging because it keeps me kind of interested. Um, but when I interviewed for, um, for the job here, the principal said, Hey, um, you know, I see your background. Would you like to teach cybersecurity and computer science? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll teach whatever you want. And, uh, and certainly, you know, math is good and we need it. And it's certainly great for cognitive thinking and, uh, problem solving skills, but the cybersecurity and computer science is, uh, uh, I'm sort of a nerd anyway. And so that, uh, that makes it just a lot more fun. So I, uh, you know, we have a crazy classroom here. Uh, we've done a great deal of work, I think, since you saw it last, Adrian, and uh, and we just keep adding neat stuff to it. And so that just makes it kind of fun. It makes it uh, makes it less of a job and more of like a sort of a entertaining hobby or something, I guess. Yeah, yeah, there, there are a lot of, a lot of good points there. Um, yeah, it's it, it's. Uh, <laughs> I think you said twenty five percent adults. Is that what you said? Is that the <laughs> well, percentage? No, I, I mean, I mean, 75% of 
uh, into it adulthood, you know, and then 25%, right. they just got to flesh it out. But, uh, but that does vary by individual. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Um, yeah. So you, you kind of answered my next question was uh, whether or not you were the one that, you know, brought up the idea of having a cybersecurity course at the, at the class level or at the high school level. And, uh, and, and you created a club as well. Is that correct? Yeah. And, you know, and that's a great point is it hadn't uh, occurred to me that they would be teaching cybersecurity in high schools. And in fact, uh, here in Knox County, this is new. Uh, so the year that I started four years ago, um, when I started teaching and, and started teaching a cybersecurity class, um, that was the first cybersecurity class they offered here at, uh, at this high school uh, and, in fact, in the Knox County schools. Now, at the same time I did that, they also had a couple other schools that were stepping up. And uh, right now we have uh, four or five uh, high schools here in the county that do teach uh, cybersecurity classes. Ours, of course, being the best. But, um, but <laughs> it's, it's something where it just never occurred to me that, you know, high school kids would be interested or engaged in. And certainly they are. Um, the Cyber Club, we've had to split it into two nights. So it used to be just one night a week. And there were so many students coming in that... Um, you know, crowd control became a, a serious problem. Um, you know, there's one of me and there's, you know, 24 kids and they're, they all got hammers and screwdrivers and, and, you know, wailing away on computers. And, and then, oh, my mom's here. I got to go. And like, you're like looking around going, okay, well, where, where'd the hard drive go? And, uh, uh, so, so it makes for uh, a little bit better crowd control having the two separate nights, but of course that makes more work, uh, too, because now it's, you know, two nights a week. Uh, but I think it pays off. I mean, we've got kids uh, that have got CompTIA ITF plus certifications. Uh, we've got one that's halfway there on his A plus certification, and he's going to be taking his second test here at the end of the semester. Uh, we got others that are preparing right now for security plus. Um, you know, I don't know if they'll make it right. But, you know, the fact that as a high school student that you're able to take a take a bat a swing at it. Right. And maybe you pass, maybe you get close. That still shows the level of initiative and ability that uh, I think really helps uh, make them stand out. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, you, you, you've answered some of the questions I, I was I was going to ask, Sorry. you know, about but uh, no, it's great. It's great uh, about what kids do uh, after the class. Uh, you know, kind of curious. It looked like from your background that you've uh, taught adults before. What, what, was it a big shift moving to high school? Was that a big uh, uh yeah, Chain. There, there's a lot of differences um, between, especially military students, right? Because you you have a level of control over them that you don't have over uh, over high school students. Um, but you know, also the kids can be more fun too. Uh, so you know, just as far as their their engagement and their enthusiasm, and and that can be a lot of fun. I mean, that's uh, that's probably one of the biggest things is trying to keep their their enthusiasm levels up and and enjoying that part of it. But yeah, it is different, and I think different good. Um, but yes, I've I've taught uh, or um, you know done both uh, high school and then adult learners as well. So, do you start from scratch with them? You know, cybersecurity is a very broad uh, topic. You know, and and can go very deep in in certain parts of the discipline. Um, are, are are there courses that you that you require or recommend that the the kids take before taking your cybersecurity class, or do you just start from scratch? So Knox County Schools has a, a prerequisite for um, for cybersecurity classes, and that is a computer science foundation. So it's kind of a fundamentals class. Uh, they give them a little bit of like say web design, coding, cybersecurity, uh, some odds and ends. Usually that's geared at freshmen, so they're coming right out of middle school. They're coming into high school. Uh, starting that, what am I going to be when I grow up kind of thing. And that, uh, so that's sort of introductory class. And if they like one of those topics, then they kind of feed into that track within the school. And we do have, um, we now are offering, this year we started offering um, a whole series of, of classes. So we have Cybersecurity 1, Cybersecurity 2, uh, Cybersecurity 3 slash practicum. And then also uh, we do this thing called work-based learning. And so uh, that's where uh, I'll have some students that will either be working like as an intern for me uh, here in the classroom, trying to help keep up with those uh, Proxmox server backups, or uh, they'll be working maybe for a company, but most of the time working, like I've got one student that's working now out of my classroom during that period, 
but working for that company doing cyber, cybersecurity related things, um, kind of gaining some experience and getting their feet wet in that sort of uh, in that sort of arena. So there is a nice sequence now, a nice flow. So if you uh, get some kid that just really is uh, engaged, they take computer science foundations, uh, move into cybersecurity one, and then uh, if they want to keep going, they can. So th there is a little bit of a flow we're trying to put into place on that. I, I could use research interns. Just just putting that out there. Uh, I'll take you up on that because that would be fantastic. And I can see uh, it's a lot of great value, I think, for the students uh, as well as for uh, for the people they're supporting. And, uh, and it could be a win-win. So I will definitely sign you up for that and look for my email. And uh, we'll try to get that teed up for uh, next school year. Awesome. Uh, Tyler, Larry, any questions? Yeah, so uh, on uh, Paul Security Weekly uh, yesterday, uh, we also had some folks uh, doing some stuff around education, uh, but more on the elementary school side. <clears throat> and it, it's sounding like you know, your program is a little bit uh, better off than what we're starting to see with what we saw in the elementary school side. Um, but it, it, are there any particular challenges around sort of teaching uh, some of the stuff to students where maybe even some of the technology in some of these schools is you know, not, not the best. Uh, our example was uh, elementary school and that, you know, maybe bringing a little cybersecurity primer to some of the elementary school kids would be great. Yet when the technology program there is, you know, assigning everyone the same seven character password, that's a dictionary word so that they can log into their Gmail accounts. Like, is there like a technology and an education gap for something like this? Yeah, I would say so. I, I would say your observation about uh, elementary schools is probably right on. And uh, certainly, you know, with the younger kids, um, you know, <laughs> it, it can be a challenge with technology, right? You know, they're, uh, uh, they can be pretty rough on equipment too, as can high school students. But uh, I, I would tell you the biggest thing I think involves really funding. And uh, so I, I would, so I started this program here. They said, hey, why don't you teach cybersecurity class? They gave me a, a blank classroom with one computer uh, that was um, so old that I, I pretty much chucked it as soon as I possibly could. I think it was a core two duo for, uh, for comparison purposes. Um, and I mean, no network, nothing. And so what we've had to do over uh, four years that I've been here is we can completely change the whole classroom. And a lot of that is because, uh, you know, a lot of people and, and kids especially uh, are very concrete learners, right? You think about the difference between concrete conceptual thinking. So they're very much into concrete. They need to see it and touch it. So I can mumble mumble about, you know, network switches all day long, but if I don't have a network switch to show them where they go over and they can plug the cables in and then do that kind of thing, it makes it a lot harder, right? So I think that becomes the biggest challenge is figuring out um, how do you get the funding to credibly set up a uh, cybersecurity classroom uh, so that the students have really what they need, the resources they need in order to uh, in order to be able to react and to learn in a way that is conducive for the student so keep, to keep it from being so conceptual. And certainly we can talk about, uh, you know, conceptual versus concrete. But I found that the more I can give them hardware that they can actually touch and work on uh, and, and not just that they're only doing hardware, obviously they're doing software, too, but just having it there is really important. So that, that's probably the biggest challenge, I think, is that. You know, how do you get someone who can go find the money, go figure out how to make it all work uh, and carry a teaching load as well? It, it, uh, there's a lot to it. So uh, I have a quick question for you. Um, you know, I think it's one thing to pull together um, hardware and things like that. I think it's super important. But at a fundamental level, you as an educator, um, what do you find the most effective when it comes to encouraging um, computer science in this case, or STEM in general, right? Um, uh, in your students, what do you find like, hey, if I can get them to, to see this or recognize this, or if I show them these things, that has the biggest, I guess, hit rate or tendency to light up their eyes and get them excited. Do you have any, any you know, in your years of experience, um, can maybe trends that you've seen around some of that? Yeah, so uh, and I, I've got an announcement going on in the background here. I'm still at school, so I apologize. Um, but, Job comes you know, the, first. No problem. No problem at all. <laughs> well, it's the end of the day. They need to get out. Uh, they need to get out the door. So uh, you don't don't between the kids in the doorway. Um, but you know, a, a lot of it's uh, a lot of it's just they don't know, right? We talked about their 
you know, 75 percent um, developed and, and largely they don't have experience. So when you say what is cyber security or what is computer science, you know, well, you know, what is that? So about half the battle is just trying to figure out how to um, get them that information and help them understand what it is. So uh, we try to do a lot of a lot of interesting things about that. Um, for example, uh, right now we have a, a grant request in trying to get some money. We, we want to have the kids set up a, uh, a Raspberry Pi to, to capture a, a video or excuse me, a, a graphic image of like kids walking by or whatever, and then run a filter on them. Because if they can run a filter on that and then, you know, highlight stuff, emboss, flip the colors, and we put it out like in a public space, like in our what we call the West Mall Commons, uh, the idea is maybe that would help them see, well, this is computer science. And that's something that somebody else in, in this building did, you know, another student. And so, uh, and then they compete maybe to try to get out there. And so I, I guess it's the, it's the, how do you get it in their choice set as far as that they could go ahead and, and do this kind of thing? So, yeah, there's a lot to that in, in trying to make them understand what it is and how it could benefit them and their lives and that sort of thing as well. Does that kind of get at what you're asking? Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, part of that question comes from selfishness. I have a 14 year old daughter who's a freshman at college um, who recently expressed some interest in computer science. And I personally have a master's in computer science. I was a um, you know, an R&D guy for the first half of my career before I switched over to the business world. And, you know, for me early on, when I was in middle school, it was a passion because, you know, the internet didn't exist. Things were very different. And I look at the question that my daughter has for me. And when she says things like, hey, dad, we're going to be programming in, I don't remember what language, Python or whatever. And, you know, I'm thinking about doing this, but it's a hard class. Everybody said it's really hard. And I'm like, well, first of all, you got your father. How long, you know, I got your back. We'll, we'll do all right. But then, how, you know, the question was just how do you kind of get them interested? And I think for me, um, you know, she's she has the benefit of, of seeing me and what I do. Um, but I don't know that all students have that. Right. So that's, I think, where the, the general gist of the question came from. Yeah, well, and I would just follow up to say that I found that, um, you know, kids are, you know, they're not as old as I am, and their attention spans are a lot shorter, right? So they kind of need novelty. And so what I try to do is come up with just neat things. Like right now, we are installing on our door physical security, right? We're installing on our door uh, RFID badges. So they'll have their own ID badge to get in. And it's got an RFID chip. They have to hit the thing. They come in. I put up a sign, you know, no tailgating, that kind of thing. They have to push the rocker switch, you know, to get out the door. Um, and they love stuff like that. You know, I, I was, you know, wanting to get away from that. You know, like when I retired out of the Air Force, I didn't want to wear a badge anymore and have, you know, security checks. And said the kids are like, wow, that's so cool. They'll come by and show each other and tap the door. And so, uh, but having that kind of novelty stuff really helps them because it gives them something kind of uh, like new and exciting. And and again, it's it's like that thing where you have to break up the monotony with them. And, uh, and so I think that's, uh, of course, that makes it hard because I've got to spend a lot of time thinking, you know, trying to outthink the kids and keep them amused and entertained. But uh, but that also makes it kind of fun. You know, we always have about 12 too many projects going on at any given time. But I found that that seems if you have enough of those things going on, somebody's going to go, wow, that's that's kind of cool. And and that kind of helps draw in the different kids that might have some interest, uh, and, but, but might need to feel like, you know, how can this be fun or what can I do with it? I, I think I know what we could play with next time I come by. I've got a badge cloner. Excellent. Yeah, that'd be good. And this, uh, this is a this thing. What we're doing is a lot of fun. Sorry, there goes the bell. Give me your badge, Vlad. So, and, so what we've done is we've, uh, you know, so this is the kind of badge I'm talking about. You know, we've got, uh, right. you know, uh, you know, badges the kids, you know, use to get in the door with and everything. And I mean, just this kind of thing, it, you know, it's different. It's cool. It's kind of fun for them. So, uh, I just think that kind of thing is. Uh, is super fun and having something to play with, you know, like uh, one thing they like about you, Adrian, when you come visit is the chip in your hand, man. They, that's how I was telling them, I got this uh, podcast thing and they go with who? And I said, well, Mr. Snobbery. And they go, who's that? I go, the guy with the chip in his hand. Oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so they love stuff like that. Yeah. They, they, they lost their mind <laughs> when I mentioned that, but um, yeah, and I, I use mine every day, uh, my apartment complex to get into the mail room and, and the gym and all that. Uh, same, same RFID, low frequency uh, RFID cards, you know, pretty easy to clone. <laughs> Just a static yeah. value. Yeah, we'll do it. That'd be a lot of fun. They would really like that uh, for a lot of reasons. So, yeah, please bring it. All right. Um, 
Tim, anything else you want to share before you wrap up? I, I, I know you usually have something going on. Um, like you're usually doing competitions and stuff like CTFs with the kids. A anything you want to, you want to mention before we wrap up? Sure. Uh, yeah, we do have, uh, there's some kids trickling in, uh, over on the other side of me there, because uh, we have a competition night. It's one of our uh, one of our cyber club uh, nights. So they're going to come in room to kind of work on some stuff. Uh, I, I just tell you, you know, from a general perspective, uh, I, I think there's a fair amount of interest in this from the students, especially when they see it in their lives as something every day they deal with. Uh, much more so than like Tyler said, you know, we we didn't have the internet back then, and but they do, and so. This, I hate to say the smart ones, but the, the ones that are looking ahead are thinking, you know, this could be something important to me, to my life, to my future, whether it's in cybersecurity or not, right? You know, it, I, I tell them, okay, let's say you, you don't want to take a security plus test or, or work toward one of those goals. That's okay. You still need to understand about router configuration, uh, why you got to encrypt your stuff and that kind of thing. Sorry, did, am, are you still there? Yep, yep, you're still back. There. You're oh, good. Sorry about that. My screen went blank, and I'm like, ah, darn that technology. So anyway, um, but the whole idea is that you know they um, um, they still need to understand and know how this stuff works so that they can be properly prepared for their future, personal and professional lives. So I think that having um, interested people like like you, Adrian, for supporting the class and that kind of thing is super helpful because it shows them who's out there, what's going on. They hear those stories. Like you said, they love the stories uh, because it helps them kind of identify. Could I do that? Could that be me? And uh, I would just tell you that for anyone that's interested in supporting your local high schools that, that might be starting these kinds of programs or have them running right now, uh, there's really two things that, that we as the teachers need. Um, one is money. And uh, frankly, um, you know, the, I, I feel as a, as a private citizen that our schools are incredibly underfunded, especially to try to engage in this kind of, of this kind of learning and environment where it takes a lot of money to, to buy switches and to put things in place. So money is incredibly important. And the easier you make it for a teacher to figure out how to get the money from you and to put it into the classroom, uh, the better, because I got to say, I spend a lot of time uh, writing grant requests. Now, of course, I make the students write about half of it, but you know, I still got a lot of editing and stuff to do. Um, now, beyond that, uh, the other thing is time. Um, if, if you have an availability of time that you can in some way contribute to that classroom, like um, I got to tell you, I spent a lot of time trying to reimage computers and trying to set things up and try to figure out how to put RFID uh, badge readers on the front door. Now, of course, I try to get the students to do all of that I possibly can because it's great learning for them. It gets them a, a vested sense of interest in it. But at the same time, um, they can only do so much, right? That's that's why they're students. And so uh, it becomes uh, it comes pretty challenging to try to maintain um, essentially a, a classroom laboratory network um, and teach and keep up with uh, uh, what the kids are doing. A uh, uh, quick story, if we have just a minute, I'll tell you, I, I told one sure. student, I said, hey, uh, go double check how many we're, we're, we got this grant we're going to buy some new hard drives for our uh for our server we got a we got a, an old uh, dell uh, powerhead server uh, go just double check you know how many hard drives do we have you know in the server so they go over and come back a little while later and, and said well we got five in there i said okay plus one because we pulled one out you know hot swapping uh you know to check he goes okay yeah so six and just then the internet goes down our system goes down and and i'm struggling finally ask well what do you do you know did you pull a network cable out or something over by the server or you know he goes no i just went over and pulled a hard drive out looked at it pushed it back in pulled the next one out pushed it back in and i go ha ha no no really what do you do and he goes well that's what i did <laughs> so he he brought our server to its knees um you know because he didn't understand the idea of hot swapping so and so then that takes me you know hours after school to try to get that back up again they so were using like those <laughs> the server was using yeah, them. <laughs> look hot swapping one maybe one at a time let's not hot swap all six uh, hard drives at the same time it so doesn't work I, i've got i've got to share an anecdote uh building on top of that i, I remember my my first big career job was working for a large payment processor and we actually had a database specialist we brought in to improve the performance of our main Oracle database, which ran our customer relations uh, uh, relationship management uh, database, our main internal database we used to manage the 1 million plus merchants who used us for credit card processing. And it, it didn't occur to her 
she took that database down in the middle of the day on a weekday, like on a Wednesday, like 1 p.m. on a Wednesday, takes that main database down. Thousands of people in the call center are using it uh, when she takes it down. Uh, she said to 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 fix some performance, like like to switch some kernel flags or something like that, you know, increase the SGA size or, you know, what, what whatever you do to improve Oracle database performance. But it didn't occur to her that people were using it. <laughs> Yeah, right. That she needed that we needed to find a time when she could take it down, go through change control. Like none of that occurred to her. She didn't have that experience in high school where you know <laughs> the server went down when she took out the the, the hard drives. I guess because it, it honestly did not occur to her that people were using that data. She was just completely separated, uh, just in her own world, down her own rabbit hole, fixing problems. Uh, not realizing that the thing she was working on was actively being used by others. So uh, I, I think that's a really interesting anecdote. And that's such an important lesson to learn uh, early on in this field. Well, and and for what it's worth, I turned it into a teaching moment, right? Uh, first <laughs> off, you know, Nathan will never do that again. But uh, but secondly, so the next day in class, I go, okay, our network's down because I still haven't got it fixed uh, fully yet. Um you know, so I have one team, you're going to talk physical security. How do we keep this from happening to our server again? You know, another team, okay, we need a backup server, clearly. Uh, you know, so we got to get that rolling. You know, third team, how do we start trying to figure out how to, you know, get this server back up? And and so, uh, you know, so while at the moment, in, in the moment, I um, may have may have had an adult beverage when I got home uh, that first night, <laughs> but it, it did turn into a teachable moment where a lot of students maybe now learn, hey, you got to really think about this. This is why it matters. And so a well-meaning, you know, person can can inadvertently cause a lot of challenges just by by accident. And so if you pre-plan for that, it helps. So, uh, you know, so it all, it all turned out pretty good. And uh, and uh, I think uh, I think a lot of students have learned a great lesson from it. So, but, uh, but yeah, those things do happen. Yeah. Now, excellent story. Uh, excellent stuff you're doing there uh, over at Bearden High School. I uh, can't, can't wait till I get to, uh, to see you guys and, and, and the kids again. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for joining us on Enterprise Security Weekly today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate you all. Adrian, you're the best, and I will be in touch. Take care. <laughs>